Hey, Zim oh. here. Today, I want to talk about a topic that drives me crazy. Um, I've got nothing to show you, so if you're expecting me to show you something amazing in Tableau, this won't be the time where I do that. However, I do want to talk about hacks. And by hacks, I don't mean people like me who've spent too much time in front of a screen uh, working on Tableau. By hacks, I'm talking about these tricks that we sometimes use to get ourselves out of sticky situations in Tableau dashboards and inside of Tableau workbooks. Um, for a long time, people have asked me, hey, Tim, uh, the map layers, you didn't do a video showing us how you can use it to do, uh, you know, triple or quadruple axis charts. And there's actually a reason for that. I personally have an issue with teaching people hacks because um, of a philosophy that I, I think I've, I've slowly developed over time. And I'm not saying that this is an issue for everyone. I'm not saying everyone should stop using hacks because I think there is a time and a place. But there's a there's a deeper problem that I have with hacks, and it was sort of exemplified to me the other day during an exam when a question came up and it asked, "How do you get a user to switch uh, between two charts um, in Tableau?" And it gave you a bunch of options, and it's essentially this uh, capability here. Uh, I didn't even believe for myself that this was actually something that was in documentation as something you should do. And this is probably a borderline hack. Okay, so. Um, you don't, it doesn't necessarily mean that this is a hack because in some ways this feature has gotten better over time. But essentially what you can do is you can uh, create a parameter and you can then use that parameter in a calculation to control which view is being used. So essentially your parameter is then controlling whether a sheet is hidden or not. And that's essentially what happens. And essentially you can then choose, oh, I'd like the map or I'd like the bar chart. And it's just switching off charts. And what's actually happening here is you're dragging all three charts into the container and the parameter is actually dynamically enabling and disabling the charts. And then the charts that is disabled sort of collapses and uh, there you go, okay? So in real terms, the documentation makes this look like a feature, but in my view, it's a hack. Because for me, the right way to do this would be to give the user a capability in the user interface, along with things like containers and layouts, um, control and the ability to be able to change that. And so let's get talking a little bit more about hacks and why they drive me crazy. The number one reason I don't think you should be using hacks is because of performance. Now, a lot of the hacks that we typically see, let's take the map layers options where you uh, had uh, uh, essentially changing the um, the capability where essentially map layers, uh, well, layers are only supported uh, in maps. So what people were doing is they were building a map, then disabling the mapping capability, the background essentially, that turns into a scatter plot. And then from there, you can then start to visualize whatever you want. The reason I find those techniques a little bit cumbersome is because I think what they've allowed Tableau to do is essentially get away with not building a proper user interface for the product. And if you know me, I have absolutely ranted and raved for a long time about the lack of improvements to the layout system inside of Tableau, to the point where I think most people in Tableau are fed up with me bringing it up. And um, they're absolutely sick to the, to, the, to, you know, to the nuts every time I bring it up, every time we talk about it. Um, but the layout system hasn't had any improvement for such a long time. And uh, as people will tell you, this ends up being over 50 to 60% of the time an author spends just fiddling with things like formatting and layout and so on and so forth. And so um, I very much will, I'll literally rejoice the day that we get those features. But the downside of that is because we're not getting improvements in the layout and the formatting, we're also not getting improvements in terms of the UX capabilities that we want to be able to put into these products, these analytical products so other people can use them. And so, yes, uh, when you don't do any innovation whatsoever on layout, people will try and bend the existence of what they use to be able to do stuff. A really good example is set actions. Now, when set actions came out, I think the number one use case for set actions wasn't actually analytical use cases. It was in fact user interface hacks that you could then do to build things like menu systems and drop downs. I'm not gonna bother trying to show you those on screen, but I will go find tweets and maybe put links to stuff that you can sort of go out and check out. But it was a real shame because set actions were a really, really powerful feature. And what ended up happening is it got hijacked by users who were just crying out for some user interface capabilities to be added to Tableau. 
every single feature that comes out. I can't think of any time there's a new chart, a new capability. By default, our sort of first instinct is to try and find ways of doing things that we wanted to do with the user interface or with layout or with design that we haven't been able to do. And so I actually think that the more we as a community start to use hacks, the more Tableau is actually able to get away with it. Because if I look at this uh, uh, document here, I don't think this is the appropriate way. I don't think it's appropriate that it takes uh, 12 steps to give someone a user interface to be able to switch a chart on or off. You should just be able to create a menu system and a button system, link the different selections to those charts, and when you click on them, they show up and they hide. Now. They did add something called show and hide controls, which now also works for tiled content. Check out my video on that. But nonetheless, it's a far cry from what we've actually been doing for years and is sort of crying out for masses of improvement. Same with layers. Actually, layers is a really good example and I'll actually highlight how this highlights a specific problem inside of Tableau. But in essence, layers, map layers. Um, if you had put map layers in front of any author, the first thing they would have asked you is, hey, can I do this for charts as well? Okay. Layering is not something we want to just do in maps. Maps are in many ways just a, an elaborate scatter plot with the background. And so people thought exactly that. And they've sort of manipulated that capability and built a bunch of features out of it. And it actually highlights what I think is a core problem uh, when we come to product development, especially in large companies, which is these kinds of features tend to have a home. And when there is no one home for the entire user experience, as it were. So if there's no product team whose job it is, is to look at something like map layers and ask the question, hey, shouldn't map layers be a feature that's possible in all charts? Um, then essentially things like this happen where one part of the product maps uh, looks at that feature and goes this is incredible this is going to help us tell better stories with maps and it has absolutely done that and yet um let's for argument's sake say there's a there's a histogram team and they how did the histogram team not look at that and think well yeah that would be useful for our charts too uh, and in fact and in, how did anyone in the charting system or anyone who looked at that didn't look at layers and think that's an incredible capability. How else could we use that to augment our analytical capabilities when we're doing stuff? How could our users use layers to tell stories with their data? And you don't have to go far to find that out. If you go to Tableau Public, surprise, surprise, a free product, lots of people week in, week, week out, visit the days left, right, and center that highlight so many use cases for layers. And so to me, that's a real problem because Again, if you'd gone through the development process, you wouldn't have arrived at the solution and said, mapping is the only part of the product that deserves this. And so it slightly hints at the fact that there are sort of not necessarily silos within the product development team, but there are sort of camps within the product development team and they have to sort of pitch for resources. And if one team can pitch for some resources, then they get that resource assigned to their particular part of the project. But for some reason, that resource is not sort of a holistic one. You know, while they're working on map players, it would have been interesting to say, well, could we spend a bit more time and bring this out for all chart types and make it more of a wow feature? Instead, you've kind of got this layout that's, that's deliberately been designed for other charts as well, but just, just hasn't been sort of kind of doesn't feel finished. OK, and so that sort of highlights a problem in general for me, because um, so much of where we've got to today with Tableau now needs the product to come together. A lot of the features we need going forward to make Tableau the best product it can be needs multiple disciplinary teams to come together. If you think about the layout system, that doesn't just need the formatting team, the dashboarding team to come together. It also needs the charting team to come together, because most of the things we're formatting involves analytical charts that we're building. We also need the service a team to get involved because if you want to build those things and animate them and make them beautiful they need to be performant and fast and load in seconds on tableau server so many of the things we need to do going forward require a more holistic sort of joined up approach across multiple teams the kind of approach you kind of see at apple where when ios 15 for example has just come out a bunch of the features work right across the whole ecosystem of apple they don't just work you know in their sort of silos they work across the whole setup and so going back to hacks which is sort of how i got on, onto this rant in a way Hacks really highlight sort of the weaknesses of the approach sometimes in, dev in product development. And 
sometimes I have to say this, sometimes as a community, we tolerate it. We actually accept the fact that these hacks are the accepted way of doing things to the point where it makes it to documentation. A 12 step process to switch between sheets actually makes it to documentation and even into an exam. And in my opinion, that shouldn't be how user interface design is done. It shouldn't be 12 steps to show and hide a single chart inside a tableau. And that shouldn't be something that you know is held as, as, as an achievement or something like that. There's actually a video a colleague of mine has done on this feature and it's had 18,000 views and it's kind of makes me cry because 18,000 people out there think that this is the right way to do that. And actually, there's a better way of doing things. Of course, there's a better way of doing things. If you ask half of those people, they could probably draw something on a napkin that might not necessarily be better, but would work in their heads a lot better than what we currently have now. So the the hacks, the hacks really, really, I think, damage uh, the quality of the products we get long term. Because if there's, if 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 something never ever sort of bubbles up to the top of the pile in terms of need, if we don't cry about something sort of hard enough, because there's a hack that kind of suffices, then essentially it just never makes it to any developer or any sort of product manager's uh, table to be fixed. Because new features and new requirements to keep up with the competition will always take priority. And so this is sort of not necessarily a plea, but I'm sort of saying to people, don't put up with hacks. <laughs> um, because if you put up with hacks, uh, what will end up happening is over time, we'll have a very hacky product, which has lots of sort of nuances. I mean, it's not too long ago, we had to use sheet to uh, make buttons to progress. And that was again, a documented way of doing things until someone realized that's awful. Let's actually just give you a button element. Uh, and because the reason that was done is because it was causing performance issues. It actually had an impact on the server and it was sort of, making things go crazy. And that leads to my final point around performance. All these hacks that we do, when you actually deploy them in an enterprise setup, if you just imagine, let's say uh, you build a hack in your workbook and it's fine in your workbook because in your workbook, it's just you and your content. But let's say you start sharing this practice. Let's say you get hailed as a champion and someone asks you, what's the best practice way of doing this, this and this? And you share that skill with someone. Now they go build the same thing and they teach it to two more people. And that sort of keeps going. And before you know it, you have a Tableau server where uh, maybe a small percentage, maybe 10 to 20% of the workbooks have these hacks in them. But these hacks don't sort of surface themselves. There's no like little part of Tableau saying, hey, I used a hack. These hacks are just hidden inside of workbooks and there's no real easy way to know which ones are being used and what impact they're having. But they're sitting there sort of just, you know, waiting to become a problem. And where it does become a problem is especially when Tableau then decides to do something about it. And now you've got to go find those hacks and remove them and do them in the supported way so that things start to perform a little bit better. Okay, so performance is always a sort of a key thing that's uh, especially pertinent when you run on-premise for Tableau Server. Um, now, I have to say most of the hacks, I, I may be exaggerating, most of the hacks don't cause the kind of performance issues that really sort of take a server down. Those tend to be sort of bad, bad practice, things like large cross tabs, you know, large tables. But nonetheless, they do have an impact. And in some cases, they do slow things down, especially when they get layered onto really complex data sets or really large data sets. It just sort of multiplies the problem. And so Number one, I think it ruins uh, the product development process for everyone because we don't sort of get the uh, focus and attention we need on features. And then number two, performance. It, you know, performance is not something you can guarantee. Um, number three for me personally as a consultant is hacks are very hard to hand over. Um, the amount of times I've been handed over something and then it's uh, been built with a hack and then you look at the hack and you go, really, this is not resilient. This is not going to withstand sort of uh, resilience testing or it's not going to stand the test of time. Let's say I leave, I've built a hack and then I move on. Uh, unless I've documented that hack religiously, which is not often the case, um, then again, that hack is sort of just living there. Now someone comes in to edit that, they look at it, and it's essentially the same problem that Excel has had with things like VBA script, where it's just basically a black box. And so hacks sort of just proliferate throughout the entire sort of community. And there's no real way, there's no sort of common folklore about how things should be done. And so 
listen, I'm not trying to be some some old granddad, you know, in my day, we did things properly. I'm not trying to be that kind of person. I love seeing the innovation. I love seeing the energy that comes out of these little tricks. And actually, sometimes features come out of these things. It's because people push the boundaries of the product that we discover features and we discover sort of capabilities. But in my view, we don't get feature improvements often enough as a result of the hacks. Uh, too often, those hacks just become the common way of working. Now, I'm going to stop there because I think, I think I'm just going to end up sounding like an absolute granddad if I carry on. But nonetheless, um, look, that's my opinion. That's my view. And so when people ask me, hey, Tim, why haven't you done that video on that little tips and tricks? Or how do I do this? You'll see comments all the time asking, hey, how do I do this or this? And often you might see me link to someone else making that video. And in my view, um, that's sort of my approach. I don't make videos on these hacks because in my opinion, I think as soon as something changes about them, they're going to break. Whereas supported features tend to get improved on. So I can make another video a few months later saying, hey, you know the map layers feature? Now that's available for all chart types and here's how it works. And instead you don't have to sort of figure out some sort of hacky solution that happened. My light just went out mid round. That's how that's how long I've been recording. So <laughs> I'm going to stop there. Um, I, let me know what you think. Am I being some old fogey? Uh, am I wrong? Am I flat out just incorrect? Do you have an opinion on this? I'd love to know. Um, have, has a hack ruined your life or has a hack changed your life? I want to know about the good stories as well, because let me be honest, again, hacks sometimes do get you out of sticky situations. I just don't like how much we lean on them in the Tableau community instead of actually pushing for a better product and having the time spent on things that we've been crying out for for a long time. So thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this, um, check out some of my other Friday thoughts. Um, I did a video on Tableau's feature and that actually went down pretty well. Lots of you sort of got in touch and lots of stuff has sort of happened since that discussion. I've had so many discussions with um, uh, various people inside of Tableau as well about that video. So again, uh, watch out some of that content um, in your own time. It's the kind of stuff you can switch on in the background, you know, do something in the background, just listen to me talk because it's not often much on screen. So I do check out these sort of Friday episodes as well. I'm going to be trying to get back into the Videos, I took a sort of a mini break. What tends to happen after a big release is I tend to sort of take a short break because when you record a lot of videos, um, it just it does get a little bit monotonous when you're trying to get them out. And you can't really spread out the new feature releases either because there's only really a short window where they're relevant. And then people start searching for them over time. So what I try and do is get them out early. Now I've had one issue with Slack. Setting up Slack for Tableau Online for me at least has been really troublesome. I'm actually engaging Tableau support on that particular topic to try and see if we can get it fixed. Um, once that's fixed, I'll actually be able to show you how to set it up and then how it works. That's probably one of the biggest features I haven't covered yet, but we'll definitely be covering that. And then hopefully we can make hay on some of the other features I haven't done yet on 2021.3. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.